Hi guys, it's me, Jason, and today I am reading a book. Well, it's my first video first, so I, and I'll be posting every, not every day, but every Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sundays, and whenever I feel like to it, but I will be posting exactly those days, unless I'm really, really sick. Or have a special occasion that I have. So let's get started. This is a book called Dr. Proctor Fart Powder, The Magical Fruit. It's by Joe Nesbo and illustrated by Michael Lowry. And this is New York Times Best Smelling Author. So let's get started. Chapter, and I'm only reading chapter one because it's a very long, thick book you can see. So, chapter one, the not quite so great gold robbery. It is nighttime in Oslo and it's raining on the quiet sleeping city or is it sleeping? One of the raindrop hits the enormous clock on the side of the Oslo City Hall Tower and clings to the tip of the minute hand before letting go and falling 20 stories. Striking at asphalt with a soft splat and starting to join the other raindrops running down the street. Car tracks. Now, if we were to follow this raindrop as it made its way to the manhole cover during this Oslo night, we would hear a faint sound through the silence. The faint sound would get louder when the drop of water fell through the hole in the manhole cover, plunging down into Oslo's sewer system, where the darkness is even thicker. And along with the raindrop, we will start sailing in filthy wreckage sewage water through the pipes, some so small and narrow, and some so big that you can stand up that run this way and that way. Way below ground level is this rather insignificant big little city, which is the capital of Norway. And its intense system of pipes carries us deeper into Oslo innards. The sound gets louder. It is not a pleasant sound. Actually, it sounds like a dentist's office. Like the sound of a drill crushing its way through teeth, gums, and sensitive nerve endings. Sometimes the rumbling is low and sometimes screeching high, depending on what the drill diamond's hard. Whirling bit is digging into, but whatever. At least it's not a sound of an anaconda's hissing. Yard long tongue, the creaking of half a ton constrictor muscles tightening, or the defining banging of jaws, the size of an inflatable swimming ring, slamming shut on their victim. I only mention that because of the rumor that snake like that lives down there. And because a pair of yellow glowing reptilian eyes are just visible in the sewer, they're in the darkness to the left. So if you are regretting having come already, now's your chance to the moose. Just quietly close the book, tiptoe out your room, and crawl under the covers. Forget that you even heard of the Oslo sewer system. That dentist drill sound. Or snakes that eat enormous water rolls. Average size kids and occasionally small adult humans. If they're not if they're not too hairy or don't have beards. So goodbye and have a good life and close the door behind you. There. Now it's just us. We will continue down this filthy river toward the dark heart of the city. By now the noise has grown to a roar and we see a light, but we realize that this is neither paradise nor the dentist from hell. But something totally different. This is a loud machine in front of us with a will on it. 
A still arm just up from the machine and disappears into a large hole that has been drilled in the top of a sewer pipe. We're almost there, boys, says the biggest of the three men standing around the machine, shining flashlights up into the hole. They're all dressed the same, in black leather boots, rolled up jeans with suspenders, and white t-shirts. The biggest one also had a bowler hat on his head. But he has taken enough to wipe the sweat off, allowing us to see that all three of them has were shaved, and each one has a letter tattoo on his forehead above his thick eyebrow. A small cracking sound is heard, and suddenly the drill starts squealing like a spoiled brat. We're in, the man with a bee tattoo on his forehead snarls, flipping a switch. The drilling noise slowly fades away. The drill bit comes into view. And it's quite a sight. It glitters in the light from the flashlights like the biggest diamond in the world. And well, that's probably because it is the biggest diamond in the world. Newly stolen from the dynamite in South Africa. The guy with the sea tattooed on his head, forehead, and goes a ladder up into a hole above them and scampers up its rungs. The other two guys watch him anxiously. For five seconds, absolutely nothing happens. Charlie, the guy with the bowler hat calls, nothing happens for more for three more seconds. Then Charlie comes back into view. He has struggled to carry something that looks like a brick. He is struggling to, except that it's golden and obviously much heavier. The side is engraved with some words, Bank of Norway. And below that is a slightly, and slightly smaller letters, Gold Bar number 101. Help me, Betty, Charlie says. The man with the B tattoo hurries over and takes the gold bar. What about the rest of them? The guy with the bowler hat asks, blowing dust off it. He has an A tattoo on his forehead, but it's a little hard to read right now since a massive wrinkle is curling over the whole letter. This is all there is, Alfie. What? Now, I'm sure at this most geographical astute of you are wondering why these three people are speaking English. After all, we are in the sewers beneath Oslo, which is the capital of Norway. And don't people speak Norwegian there? Sadly for those of us who don't know or understand Norwegian, most of the characters in this book will actually be speaking Norwegian. Happily, we will simply pretend we took one of Dr. Proctor's multi-language pills. But in this specific case, that wasn't even necessary. For some reason, these three are already speaking English. This was the only go bar in their Alfie. The rest of the bank vault is completely empty, Charlie says. You mean this is it? The entire gold reserve of the whole darn central bank of Norway? sputters Betty, the medium-sized one, and then drops the gold bar with a thump into the machine's baggage compartment. Calm down, Betty, Alfie says. It looks good, this one. Pure solid gold all the way through. We better be getting home, boys. Shh, Charlie exclaims. Did you guys hear that sound? What sound? The hissing sound, Charlie says. There's no hissing sound in the whole Sewers, Charlie, Alfie groans. Rats squeaking and frogs croaking, maybe. But you have to head farther in your jungle to hear hissing. Look, Charlie says urgently. Look at what? Uh, Alfie says. Didn't you guys see that? Yellow eyes, they blinked and disappeared. Charlie says. Red rat tails and green frog thighs, maybe, says Alfie. But yellow eyes, you have to head farther into the jungle. He is interrupted by a defining bang. Hmm, says rubbing, Alfie, rubbing his chin. Maybe we are in the jungle, boys, because that's not undeniably like a snake jaw slim shut if you ask me. And I think you better ask me now. 
All right, Alfie, Charlie says with a sigh. Where are those snake jaws? Yep, the mom says she wanted us to bring her something nice from Oslo. How about a bowl constrictor? Yippee, squeals Betty, pulling the heavy metal F-16 out the baggage compartment. All right, fine. It turns out it isn't an F-16 at all. It's an M-16. He loads it and starts firing away. The muzzle flash from the machine gun lights up the sewer as the bullets whistle and pop in the sewer pipe. The other two point their flashlights toward where the Charlie saw the yellow eyes. But there's nothing to see. Just the trembling rat on its high legs presses its back against the wall. Rats, whispers Betty. We got what we came for, says Ali, putting his boulder hat on. Pack it in and let's go. And as we follow the drop of water down further down the sewer pipe, start the treatment plant and the Oslo Ford, we hear Alfie, Betty, and Charlie packing their equipment back into the machine and starting it up. But the last thing we hear is, you guessed it, snake hissing. Well, that's the today end of today's um today's book fart powder a magical fruit Dr. Proctor and come back next time to read chapter two and just for a little clue it's called the secret guard takes the case so please come back and you it will be cool if you subscribe. And I post more videos, and I reset the dates in the beginning of the video. So, bye, and hope you enjoyed.